Okay, so today's video I'm really, really excited about because I haven't done one of these classic sci-fi EV loops in a while, and this one's really cool and kind of organic looking. Uh, you're viewing it now here on my Instagram if you want to go check it out. Uh, my Instagram is right here, Nate Stuff, and you can see a lot of my other work, and you can kind of recognize some of the tutorials here. So just a heads up, because it is the holiday season, I put my 3D Designers Essentials pack at 35% off. If you don't know about it, it's 80 procedural materials, 50 models, and 14 project files, and that is $26 with that discount. So you can go and grab that for 35% off. That's going until the end of December. So you can go check that out. But let's get into the tutorial. So here we are here in Blender 2.8. Let's go over here and make sure that we are in the EV render engine and that you have ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections turned on for this animation. Now, what I'm going to do is, um, if you've never seen my looping tutorials, we have to set up the scene so that it does perfectly loop. Um, because this is an animation and because I work in the music field, things have to loop because they you never know how long it's going to go. So I'm going to hit S. Eight on my plane and everything we design will be encapsulated within this thing or we'll duplicate it which we will um, but this ensures that it is going to be a seamless loop and then we'll delete this guy a little bit later so what we're gonna do is we're going to get in a cylinder we're gonna hit R X 90 and then on this guy what we're gonna do here is hit this little yellow box go to viewport display and change display as to wire so that it's not in the way and we can see what's going on but we can still see our box so what we're going to do is we're going to scale this guy by 8. So we're going to hit S, Y, 8, and again, it's right in our box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this guy, go to the face selection, and hit this guy, hit Shift, hit that one, hit X, and click Faces, and that deletes them. So what I want to do is basically add a really interesting wireframe modifier combination to get those really interesting um, organic sort of tube-looking things. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually add some loop cuts in here. So I'm going to hit loop cut right over here and click once. Now you're going to see this dialog box come up and we're just going to slide it till we say go around here because we're going to be decimating this. So I want to um, I want to have some flexibility here. So that's how we're subdividing this guy pretty evenly when it comes to this kind of thing. Now if we go over here to decimate, sorry, let's go out of edit mode here. So if we go over here to add, uh, to decimate here in the modifiers, let's see if we can find them. Right here, sorry. Um, and we go to planar. Basically, let's go here and actually view our wireframe. So, okay, so let's go over here and click wireframe so we can actually view the wireframe. So, again, let's go back and add that decimate modifier. So we're going to be using planar. As soon as we click planar, it eliminates that um, subdivision I added, and that's not what I want because that's not the look we're going for so I'm gonna delete that let's go here and add a displace first so that the planar um, basically the planar it acts like that because this is just straight on it's not bumpy it's not doing anything interesting so I'm gonna click new go over here to the textures and I'm gonna click clouds I'm gonna hit hold on and hit control a and apply scale okay so I'm gonna bring depth all the way down and then I'm bring scale to right about there I want it to be fairly interesting displacement um, so now we can go back and add in that decimate modifier and um, can never find it. So we can go in and add that decimate modifier, click on planar, and now we're going to get a little bit more interesting look. Now, whenever we go and add in the wireframe right here. Now, if you've heard of the, um, if you've heard of Bygen, the Bygen add-on made by Curtis Holt, this is a fairly similar process, but I want to have, um, I want to know exactly what's going on behind the scenes so that I make sure it loops, so I'm not using the Bygen add-on, but if you want a similar look, you can use that. Um, so now that we're here, click on the wireframe and make it pretty thick. So now that we have the wireframe, it's very blocky. This is actually a really cool look if you're going for a more techy look. I'm going to actually bring him down so we can see what's happening and then turn off that wireframe. So we're gonna go back here. We have this and it's very straight up and down and techy, which is a pretty cool look. Um, but first, well, what I wanna to do to make it more organic is add a smoothing modifier. And then when we go down here to repeat, what that does is, I mean, in the name, it smooths it out. And then all we have to do is go back here to our wireframe, make it thicker, and then all we have left to do is add any uh, subdivision surface. And now we have a really weird looking organic interior. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, right click shade smooth. And now we have this crazy looking interior 
that now we can uh, go ahead and start animating. First thing we're going to do is to make sure that this is a seamless loop like always is um, basically we're going to mirror this displacement. So we need a mirror object, plane access. Now that you have this empty, hold down control so it snaps and go down here and it'll snap right here to the, the edge of our box here. If you don't hold down control, then you're not going to get it in the exact placement. But if you did mess up, negative 8 is my placement. <sighs> now, click on this here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, minimize a lot of these guys. And I'm going to go ahead and add in a mirror right here. So, unclick X, go here and pick the empty as your mirror object, and I believe Y, yes, then click Y. So now, it's a seamless loop when we run our camera straight through it, which is what we're going to do right now. So shift A, go ahead and grab your camera. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that he is looking straight up. Actually, maybe uh, 180, 180 degrees. Now he's looking straight up. And then let's go back and hit 8. The location of 8 will put the camera right here at our box. So 8. So now we need to run him through really quickly. So what I want this to be is, I believe it's going to be an 80 frame animation. So do that. Also make sure, go to edit preferences in your animation tabs. Make sure that your default interpolation is on linear. That's very important. Now let's go ahead and animate him. So hit this tab here to add a keyframe, go to the very end. Now it's very important that you hit the right arrow to go to frame um, 81 that skips a frame. I mean, it adds a frame so that you don't have a one frame pause in your animation. So now we're going to believe it's negative 24. Yes. So negative 24 brings you to the end of this animation here perfectly. That's just a little bit of math. Um, insert keyframe. So now we're running through this tube. Pretty cool. Now here in the camera, I do want to make my focal length 24, which makes it a much wider lens. So right now, currently it was at 50. I'm going to make him 24. Uh, that number I like is, um, for those of you who do photography, the 24 millimeter lens is really cool just for wide angle shots. So I'm going to maintain that sort of um, that look. Now, what the problem with that is whenever I add that wider lens, things go even faster. Now, you can go with this um, speed if you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, 100, let's go do 120 frames. And right there, go to frame 121 back to our camera and see if that speed works. Yes. I like uh, this speed right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and delete that plane. So now we have this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit M, new collection. I'm going to call it tube, add that collection. And the reason why I'm doing a collection is um, right here. We're going to hit tube in the collection instances when you hit shift A. And then I'm going to hold down control. And there we go. So what the reason why I'm doing an instance instead of an array modifier is because I'm going to be adding more objects in this. And instead of just adding a uh, another array modifier on every object, you can just add them to that instance and you just duplicate that instance over and over. And it's really cool. And it updates. So if I add an object in here, an object automatically adds in here. So that's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly make sure this does loop seamlessly by adding a bunch of instances. So I added a couple instances. Uh, very important though, uh, when you are duplicating, hitting Shift D, you hold down Control so it snaps. So you can eyeball. If it's intersecting here, it's not um, going to be looping right there. That's the sweet spot. So let's just go and run through it. It's going to be 120 frames. It's about a five-second animation. And yes, it's a perfect seamless loop. And that's the most important thing about this. If you don't care about it looping, then don't worry about this step. So just to uh, just for the look I'm going for, I'm going to go back to the decimate and start decimating it some more until um, I like this inner look, just like this. And yeah, we're going to go with that. So it's all because it's all procedural. You get a, a cool look, and you can edit it, and you can make different ones as much as you want. So let's just make sure that this is a a seamless loop. It is okay, perfect. So what we're going to do is hit Shift D and duplicate this. And then what we're going to do is in the scale here on the transform settings, we're going to go to 3 on the Y as well, hit 3, and that makes him bigger. And I'm going to hit uh, Control-A and apply scale. 
So now we have a wider one around this one. So now when we play, we have this really dynamic look here. And so on this one in the middle, I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner on the wireframe right here. And this one out here, I'm gonna make the wireframe a lot thicker to maintain a little bit of that power um, just dynamically and visually. So as you can see, it's still low poly here on these edges. All you have to do is your subdivision surface, click the viewport and it fixes. So on render, make sure it's two and this one as well, make sure the subdivision render is at two. All right, so now we have the basic structure of our animation, which looks pretty darn cool. Let's start um, lighting it and shading it. So let's hit shift A and go to look dev and see how this looks with a little bit of light in it. Already looks really awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the uh, material icon and click new. We're gonna make it metallic and we're gonna make it kind of rough, just like this. And then we're gonna add that same material to this one out here, just like that. So now we have this really cool dynamic look. All right, so now we're gonna go into the rendered view and see this. We are in Eevee, make sure you're in Eevee. Right here in the world settings, bring your color down to black and we lose everything. So let's go ahead and start adding some lights. Add a point light, see him right there. Make sure that every light is parented to the camera. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the point light, hit the camera, control P and parent that to the camera. So when we press play, you can see it is following it. Just so that we can uh, actually view these animations in real time, I'm gonna go to the viewport here on the subdivision surface and bring it down to uh, zero, just so that we're not dealing with so much subdivision that it's running out um, on my power so that I can just w view it in real time, nice and smooth, and we can see it is running in the correct frame rate. I'm gonna go ahead and save this really quick. Now we're back. So now that we have that uh, parented, what, I'm, what I wanna do is add some volume into this render. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift A, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a uh, cube. I'm gonna hit S8. Just like that. First, I'm gonna drag that cube into this tube collection so that it duplicates. And then it's currently not uh, long enough, so I'm just gonna bring him over. Intersection doesn't matter here because we're just dealing with volume. So let's go ahead in the materials, click new, right over here and click principled volume. So now let, let's go back to rendered view and we can't see anything. So let's run over to the shading tab and put this tab here into the volume tab and then density 0.01 works for now. And we're gonna go to the emission strength 0.01 on emission strength and now we have emission volume. I think 0.01 is too much. Let's go to 0.005. Looks like 0.005 is a good number to run this through with. So now we're starting to see everything work out. What I don't want is a light right in front of me so I'm going to take this light. If you, if you can't find the light because it's parented, you click this little drop down on the point light. I'm gonna hit G and just move them up here. So now here on the point light, I'm gonna go and change the light to say a blue and then change the power, I'm gonna say 200. All right, so now we're getting some cool colors. All right, so now it's starting to lag my whole computer. So I'm just gonna hit H and hide that on all the stuff so that my computer can run uh, fairly smoothly while we design this. So now that we have this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna duplicate him. So I'm gonna increase his scale by 1.5. Actually, let's make them two because it doesn't seem to be going out far enough. And now I'm gonna go in here into the wireframe and make him really thin, super, super thin. And I'm gonna hit Control A, apply scale, make him really, really, really thin. Right about there. Because what we're gonna do, actually we're gonna bring the viewport resolution here. And then I'm gonna bring the decimation up as well. So let's go back to the render view and I'm gonna add in an emission material to him. And that's gonna really give it that pop that we're looking for. So emission, make it very orangey. And we'll give it a strength of 30. Wow. Okay, so now the light is overtaking the scene too much and that's because of our materials. Material's too bright. So here on that material, the first one we made, the metallic one, let's bring that material really pretty dark, right about there. And now we're starting to view it 
a little bit better. And my scene is very, very laggy because I run a laptop. So now that we have this cool thing, you can play around with it and make it look more wiry. If you look at my original design, it's very wiry. So you can see that. So you can just play around. All right, so because it's lagging, I'm just going to disable that volume, which I believe that's what's really lagging me. Still got a lot going on, so it's lagging. Um, so just keeping that in mind while you're designing. I'm going to take this guy and bring him more this direction so we can see him better. And then bring it down and see how that's affecting our scene. So for this volume here, I'm going to put the emission strength at 0 0.003 and change in the emission color to a more bluish look. Something around... This looks really, really cool. And I'm going to bring my density back, 0 0.003 as well on the density. And you should have a really, really cool render. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit this render button up here to see how it looks. All right, bam, and this is how my render looks. Now, the last thing I'm going to add to this, because if we go back to the render, um, it's, it's hard to tell what to look at. Like, even when you're flying through it, um, basically this portion right here the problem is everything is in focus so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some depth of field into the render so the way you do that is you click camera here and then you go down here and click depth of field and then what you can do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add an empty into my plane I mean my uh, scene here so now I have an empty and it's right there and if I want to move him around I'll go in the Z if I move him around, I'll go on the Y axis. And what this is going to do is tell it where to focus. So that's for easy use. So let's go back to the camera, go to the camera here, and on depth of field, pick focus object and click that empty, which is empty 001 for me. And then I'm going to put my blades all the way to the top, just slide it over, and then my F stop at, I'm going to go to 1.3 for now and see how that looks. Cool, so you can already see this back stuff back here starting to look out of focus. So let's go back to the f-stop and give it 0 0.5. All right, now we're starting to work with something really cool. So now this is starting to be out of focus, and this is in focus, and it's going to be much better when you, you actually render it. So I'm going to hit the render button again and show you how much better that looks. So now whenever we look at this, it's much, much better. Now all I'm going to do is I do need to add a light here in the middle. Uh, so I'm going to hit Z, rendered. Go ahead and shift A and add a point light. Point light, put it in the middle, make him blue, just like this, and give it a strength. I'm going to say 400. All right, cool. That's too much. So let's go 200. All right, that looks really cool. And the app. So what that point light is going to do is give it a really interesting effect because if you watch the animation, you could see these sort of like lines these reflections going in the lines and that's what that point light's going to do is give it that really really cool interest um in that so i'm going to go back out and then one important thing is in the ev settings let's go ahead on um let's go ahead on color management right down here and go from high contrast to very high contrast and that's going to go a long way to making it look really cool all right, so now we have this animation. So all you have to do is here for the render settings, you can either keep it at a PNG sequence right here, which many people recommend. Uh, for simple EV stuff, I'll just go. I just go with uh, FFmpeg video on encoding. Go to M to MP4 and right here medium quality to perceptually lossless, and then pick an output uh, place to render it. And then hit file, go to render, render image, and then at the end you should get. A pretty cool animation like this so you can go in and tweak it uh, you can see on my official render this is a little bit thicker here some different volume settings and all that stuff but gave you guys the uh, formula to make this really cool abstract very organic uh, animation so yeah there you go thanks for watching